Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media, I'm Grant Abbott and today I'm going to be making some trees. I saw CG Geek's video about making a 20 million tree forest in Blender and thought it looked absolutely amazing so do check that out. And I thought I'd jump on the bandwagon and join in and try and help promote teamtrees.org. It's a great idea where they're trying to plant 20 million trees around the globe by January the 1st, 2020. If you're based in the UK, then you might want to do something closer to home. There are Trees for Life focuses on Scotland. The National Forest Association has a plant a tree campaign. And teamtrees.org is teaming up with the Arbor Day Foundation if you want to learn more about that. For more information, do follow the links in the description. So I thought a simple thing that I could do was to show you how to make three low poly trees as quickly as possible. So once you've completed your trees, go onto social media, hashtag team trees, and see if we can raise the profile. And if you're able, you can donate. So here's the trees we're going to be making today. And I'll try and show you some different techniques for making them as quickly as possible. Now I've shown this technique before. It's using the skin modifier to create the base of our tree and it's nice and quick. So into edit mode, with vertex mode selected, you can go up here to change that or just press one on your keyboard. Select all your vertices with A, Alt M to merge and then merge them at the center. So we've got one point in the center. We can now press E to extrude and pull that out and create a tree like thing. So I'm just pressing E to extrude and pulling them out. I might want to move them and vary them so you can box select a few at a time, move them across, rotate them as you see fit. So there's a nice simple tree. The next thing to do is add our skin modifier. So let's go across the modifiers with the spanner here or the wrench if you're American. Add modifier. Under the generate menu, we've got skin. Now it all looks a bit lumpy and blobby at the moment. If you press Alt Z, you can go to X-ray mode. Let's select the whole top here and Control A. Control A to scale. And then just move your mouse from side to side and that will scale your branches. Let's get the very top ones here. Control A, very top ones here. Control A, and make the bottom ones bigger. So in fact, let's select both those. Control A, and move them bigger. Now I might think I want another point in the middle of these two. So I select them both, right click and subdivide. Now I've got another point. I can then grab that around. Maybe grab this one into the ground and scale it up with Control A. And let's grab this, pull it around. And there we have a very simple tree base. When you're happy with that, come out of edit mode and then apply your modifier. Make sure you are happy with that because that's destructive, so we can't get it back. And we've got a nice tree base. To make the tops of our tree, we can shift right click on one of our branches. So that brings our cursor to that point. Shift A to add and then add an icosphere. Now you can change your subdivisions depending on the style you want. Here I've got a very blocky icosphere, which I'm going to try this time just for the sake of trying something new. And now I can just duplicate that, scale it up, rotate it a little bit. So Shift D to duplicate, duplicate that, scale this one up over here. We want the branches to be showing, so a little bit of branches showing is good. Just make sure you keep rotating them around. Of course, S to scale and G to grab and move them into position. Make sure you go around to the side as well, otherwise you can get a very flat looking tree. And there we go, there's the first tree. Let's select that and move it across in the X axis. Shift S, curse to world origin and start afresh. Shift A to add, this time we'll add a cylinder. Let's bring our cylinder vertices down to six. Yours will probably be on 32 as default. Zoom in and into edit mode. Grab the top face, so three to go to face mode. Grab the top face and scale it in. That's our trunk. Back to edit mode. Let's just duplicate this cylinder. So shift D and bring it up in the Z axis. So shift D then Z. And I'm going to scale this, but press shift Z so it doesn't scale in the Z axis and bring that out. And then bring it down on top of my other trunk here. So this is the base of the leaves. Let's go back into edit mode. We've got that top face selected so I can scale that in a bit more. So it comes in like this, and maybe the bottom face out a bit more, so scale that out. And what I'm going to do with this one is inset this bottom face and then extrude it inwards. And I'll explain why I'm doing that in a moment. I'm just scaling that one in a bit as well. So we get this bottom face, so we inset it, then extrude it inwards. Now it might be a bit too angular here, so I'll go back into edit mode, just get that top face and scale it out just a touch, there we go. Okay, let's duplicate that, Shift D, duplicate, 
up to there, rotate it really slightly and scale it in really slightly. Shift D, move it up, rotate somewhere around there, go around to the sides as well, make sure it's not all uniform and flat and keep scaling it down slightly as you go upwards and just vary it as well. And start scaling in the Z axis as well. So make them a little bit taller towards the end. So shift D, grab, rotate and scale it down, but scale it in the Z axis. This time I'm going to press Z twice and then it will scale in the local Z axis. So it will go in the right direction. I think that's probably enough. You can just edit yours slightly so you're happy with the shape. And for the very top one, into edit mode and make that top a lot smaller. And there we've got a simple tree. Now what I like to do to this is add a bit of variation. So come in and into edit mode with each of these and maybe add a loop cut. So control R to add a loop cut down one side and then we can grab this edge here and then just grab it upwards in the z-axis and maybe just edit a few of these as well so they've just got a bit of variation it's good let's do the same to another one so I'll grab this one control R to make a loop cut and then G to grab with that edge selected there and maybe pull this edge down here and you can see the sort of variation that's adding already. I'll just quickly do a few more. I'm gonna come out of X-ray mode, so Alt-Z to come out of X-ray mode, and just add a few more for variation. And I'll talk a bit about why I added that inset in just a moment. Okay, that's looking nice. One last thing, it's nice to create little notches. So with the knife tool, press K, and just create a cut here, with left click, going around my tree, creating some cuts, last one in there, back again. So I'm just creating this sort of triangle in here, which you can see is why we needed that inset. When you've hooked it up, press enter, and you've got now three faces you can delete. So interface mode with three, one, two, three faces, delete faces, two to go to edge mode, select one of these edges here and press F to fill that face in, and F to fill that face in, and then we get a notch in our tree. Let's create a couple of those around the place. I'll go through the process again here. So into edit mode, K for knife tool, and then just go round your tree. Might need to go to isolation mode with forward slash on my numpad. So I'll just undo that. Into isolation mode with forward slash on my numpad. And let's try and create this notch again. Now yes, this is creating end gons but we don't have to worry too much with stylized low poly. Three to face mode, select those faces and delete them. And then select one edge at the base here, F to fill and F to fill. That's looking great. I think the trunk's a bit thick, so we'll scale, but not in the Z axis, so Shift Z and bring the trunk in a bit. You may want to add a bit of variation to your trunk, so into edit mode, Control R, and you can do a loop cut around the middle and add a bit of variation to your trunk. Okay, so last one. Let's grab that, move it across the X. Let's move it up into position as well. So that's touching the floor. We might want to rotate that one in the end as well. Shift A to add. This time I'm going to add a cylinder. Six sided again, and we'll make it nice and big, or nice and tall. Somewhere around there, let's grab that. Way too tall in fact. Let's just bring that down to about there. Scale, but not in the Z, so Shift Z to make it thinner. Into edit mode with tab, control R to add a couple of loop cuts. One, two. Let's select the top face with three and then just select the top face, scale that down. And now let's move these around to create a bit of variation in our trunk. Two to go into edge mode, alt left click to select a loop cut. So alt left click and let's select an entire edge loop, scale that down rotate it slightly and grab it and move it across so it's got a bit of a squiggle to it. Let's select the bottom face three to face mode and scale that up slightly. So we've got a wobbly trunk. 
it is a bit flat this side so ideally you grab an edge loop here and bring it out slightly as well be careful not to make them too flat down here okay so for this one i'm going to press shift right click to move my cursor onto the tree shift a to add mesh plane and i'm just going to scale this in the y-axis so it's like a flat tree branch move it out to the side here into edit mode Control r and create two loop cuts select the top edge and scale it up a fair bit and the second one and just scale it up a little bit so it's got a bit like a leaf in a way three to go into face mode grab that middle face and just put it upwards so we've got a very basic branch now it's not really big enough so i'm going to scale that in the x around there your bottom ones you want fairly big so maybe it's just a tiny bit bigger and then grab in the x so it's connected to our tree like this now ideally we want the center point to be here then we can duplicate them and wrap them around our tree so into edit mode into edge mode with two select that beginning edge there and then shift s and i can bring my cursor to the selected so that's shift s so my cursor is there i can then go into object mode right click and set origin to 3d cursor now my origin is in that position just one last thing i want to do to this into edit mode select one of these edges and just rotate them and i might make it a tiny bit bigger just so it's got a bit of depth to it there we go now into top view and this time instead of pressing shift d i'm going to press alt d so alt d r to rotate and i can rotate it round and then scale it slightly to make it look interesting and maybe rotate it a different way now alt d creates an instance so alt d again rotate around the z and move it into position and maybe rotate it this way this time an instance means that if i go into edit mode now it seems to select them all and if i edit one it will edit them all and that's quite handy back into object mode let's select that one again alt d rotate around the z axis and move that into position i can still rotate it in object mode and it will be different to the others and scale it in object mode and it's different to the others so that's still fine to create variation but if i think for a minute that the base is just too big i can go into edit mode select that edge and scale it down and it scales them all and that can be really helpful so with all these selected into front view with one alt d to move them upwards r in the z axis to move them around and maybe scale them down just a touch alt d in the z axis rotate them around in the z so r then z and scale them down just a touch and just keep doing that all the way up you may also want to rotate it slightly not in the z And there we go, we've got another good looking tree. Now you can go in and rotate some of these around, move them into position a bit more, just to add a bit of variation. I probably should have done these as groups, but it doesn't matter too much. Lastly then is shading. So across the shading tab up here, let's add a floor in. So Shift A, Mesh Plane, Alt G to make sure that's right in the center of our grid. Scale it right up and we've got a floor. So let's create a green for our middle tree here. New material. I'm going to call this green one and give it a nice green not too light so somewhere around here but definitely not too shiny so bring the roughness right up and that's a nice green possibly a bit too dark perhaps i don't like to get too saturated like this but it depends on your style i prefer to go a bit more into the middle so it's much less saturated in the middle here more pastely sort of colors so i can select the other green cones on this tree the one I want to copy from last, so this one last, and press Control L to link the materials up. Let's create the brown for the trunk. So click on the trunk, new material, brown. I'll probably only have one brown. Brown is down here, and you just make it a bit darker. I like to go a bit across to the reds, somewhere around there, and again, take out that roughness. And that looks nice. Let's give these trunks that brown, so select both those, the one we want to copy from last so it's got a yellow outline Control l link materials give one of our trees a green i'll give it a slightly different green this time so new green two 
This one's going to have a slightly darker green, I think. So across to the greens, some around there, and slightly darker. Might be a bit too dark, but let's bring up the roughness and see. Just a touch less. And across the yellows a bit more. There we go, that's fairly nice. You could always add a lot of variation in here as well if you liked. Last one. I'll just give it one that I've already got. And this one, slightly more yellowy. And then these three can have this one. Control L, materials, and these two can have this one. Control L, material. So slightly different greens across your tree, as if the light's hitting them in different directions. Actually, I don't like the position of those, so I'll give that one that one, and this one, this one. <laughs> and there we go. The last thing you'll probably want to do before rendering is put on your ambient occlusion. So into the render tab, put your ambient occlusion on, and just turn it up slightly so you can see the shadow between the objects. Without it, it's like that, and with it, it gives that bit of shade. And there we go. Some beautiful low poly trees. Hope you enjoyed this. Do try and get across to have a look at teamtrees.org or arborday.org or maybe one of the UK ones or ones local to you on social media for everybody to see and get involved. Thanks for watching and let's see if we can make a difference.